Good afternoon. Uh, this is Pastor Edward Sintongo. God bless each and every one that has joined us today. And um, today we're going to continue with uh, Hebrews. And we're going to handle something different. Um, Hebrews chapter 12, the continuation of the um, series that we've been discussing of a cloud of witnesses that are in the book of Hebrews. And Paul um, explaining that uh, seeing that we have such a great cloud of witnesses that those that live today uh, under a grace which was ushered in by uh, the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made on the cross, we ought to live in faith uh, since we already have that promise, the promise of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, promised through Abraham by God, but established even way beyond um, rather before um, the creation, before the creation of, of uh, humankind and everything that was ever created. Do you know that before uh, it even ever happened, God saw it. God saw that uh, Jesus Christ had to be sacrificed because God is omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. He knows that everything that is going to happen. Now, it doesn't mean that... Um, because he knew he could have stopped it. Yes, he could have stopped it, but God gives us free will, choice, to make our choice, just like he gave Adam and Eve a free will, and they made a choice. Unfortunately, the choice uh, they made was the wrong choice, the choice of being disobedient and in, uh, bringing into the world uh, the, the sting of death uh, and all these other uh, curses, the curse of uh, uh, sin, the curse of... Uh, uh, death, the curse of poverty, the curse of sickness and disease. All these are curses uh, as a result of the wrong choice that they made. We today have choice. We can either choose to follow Christ, the Son of a living God, or to follow the devil, who is, as we know, the father of lies, who came to steal, kill, and destroy. The same devil that all suffered God, the devil that was there in the beginning uh, when um, Adam and Eve were created and, and, and took them into the wrong uh, direction. It's the same trick, um, even under Christ, under the new covenant. But we have hope because Jesus Christ overcame death and, and paid the price for all our sins. Uh, now we can come boldly to the mercy seat of God and ask for forgiveness of our needs. And in our time of need, the merciful God, loving God, our Father in heaven, because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, is willing to forgive each and every one of us. Now, the enemy can fight all he wants, but that is the truth. The truth is that Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth and the life. He is the bread of our life. Whoever believes in him, says, whoever receives him shall never hunger. Whoever believes in him shall never thirst. Praise God is the source of the rivers of living water, which we know according to the word of God in John 7, verse 38 to 39, is the spirit of the living God who helps us overcome every temptation here on earth. Praise God. And maybe speaking to somebody who's been going through some kind of situation, I am here to encourage you that no matter what you're going through, by the power of the Spirit of the living God, through Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, you will overcome. Praise God. You will overcome because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. In fact, we are already victorious. Our victory is now. That is faith. Faith is the substance of hope, the evidence of things unseen. So in the future, God has already done it through Christ. Christ did it over 2,000 years ago. It is finished. It was finished over 2,000 years ago, and you have it right now. The, the only thing that is uh, uh, blocking you from having uh, what you need to have is uh, fear, is, is, is unfaithfulness, doubt. But if you have faith, then Christ has already done it. He who was rich became poor that we may be rich. He who was sinless be, uh, took on our sin that we may be sinless. Praise God. So he was sinless. He took on our sin. He paid the price of the cross. That's what he did for us on the cross, that we may be sinless. Praise God. And so as believers, we know that that's the truth, and that is what gives us assurance of eternal life in heaven. Praise God. In Hebrews chapter 12, and I'm going to pray before we continue. Praise God. Um, Hebrews chapter 12 gives us um, uh, an example of what Jesus Christ had to go through 
in order for, for, for us to have what we have, in order for us to have the grace that we have, in order for us to, to, to be forgiven, for our sins to be forgiven, in order for us to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit of the Most High God. Praise God. The now assures us that if we stand firm and under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, uh, let him fight on our behalf, sicknesses are healed. Praise God. Because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Here's what happened. Jesus Christ paid the price that we may receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. His death, his, his acceptance to die on the cross was enough, praise God, and assures anybody that believes of healing, supernatural healing. And not supernatural healing because God is spirit, and the same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead uh, is what we receive is through the spirit. So the healing is through the spirit of God, praise God. Essentially, that's what Jesus Christ did. He brought the law from the tablets of stone and now under the new uh, covenant sealed by the blood of jesus praise god because there was a price that had to be paid the holy spirit then does the work that god said he was going to do through the death of his son jesus christ the son of the living god he writes the word on the tablets of our hearts and as a matter of fact in first peter 1 23 i say it always we are built as believers we are built of an imperishable seed the living word of god that living the word of God is what gives us life. Uh, with this Jesus Christ himself speaking to us and, 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 and confirming in the realm of the spirit that we are children of God in the kingdom of God. Joint hairs with Christ, seated in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers. And I don't care what anybody may be going through. Nothing, absolutely nothing is impossible with God. Praise God. With man, things are impossible. But with God, nothing is impossible. And I can tell you that uh, I've been going through a lot of attacks and demonic attacks and spiritual forces of darkness fighting in the finances and all this and that. But once you have faith in Christ, once you have faith in Christ, nothing, absolutely nothing can stand in your way. That even if the enemy throws anything at you, David said it very, um, uh, very um, uh, clearly in the realm of the spirit, said, even though we walk in the valley of the shadow of death. We will fear no evil. So once you have faith, you can never fear anything. Praise God. And the enemy will throw at you so many things, but have faith. Faith, Jesus Christ said, even as small as a mustard seed is able, is able to move mountains. In fact, Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Why am I concentrating on faith? Because through faith, we acquire the grace. Well, it's by grace that he came, but you must believe Praise God. You must believe that God sent that uh, the, the, the Son of a living God to die for us. Of in other words, even the, having that faith, a little faith to, to come to Christ, it is in and in of itself through Christ. Praise God. And, and so it's up to you once you get the messages. People that get the message and they say no. People that reject Christ. Praise God. That, but if you believe, if you receive the message and receive it, believe it, conceive it. Praise God. That faith is able to move mountains, whether it be sickness, whether it be uh, financial problems, whether you're going through divorce, whether you're going through any kind of problem and your places of work, nothing is impossible with God if you have faith. Praise God. Whether it's joblessness, whether it's lack, poverty, debt, nothing is impossible with God in the realm of the spirit. He operates in the realm of the spirit. He controls everything. He owns everything. The word of God says, the earth and everything in it belong to Christ. So don't let the enemy fool you and say, oh, I own everything. Even as he tried to fool uh, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, who knew everything, who, who owned everything. And here the devil is, is saying to the son of God uh, and telling him, you know what? I can give you everything, all the power and the kingdoms that you see. If you bow down to me, that's what the enemy wants. He wants us to bow down to him. Don't ever bow down to the devil. Praise God. Nebuchadnezzar, he made a golden image and wanted uh, Abednego, Shadrach, and Meshach to bow down to that golden image. And whoever did not bow down to that image would be thrown in the furnace. And so they, recognizing that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was greater than Nebuchadnezzar, refused to bow down to Nebuchadnezzar. In the same way, we must refuse. Yes, it did happen. They were thrown in the furnace seven times turned over, but they never feared. And guess who got them out? He who is, was, and is to come. Hallelujah, somebody. Praise the Son of the living God. So no matter what kind of fire that you're going through, God will get you through. Praise God. Daniel himself, 
Praise God. They made a decree. And that decree, again, in Nebuchadnezzar's time, praise God. And Daniel refused to follow that decree. He refused to follow that decree. And guess what? He was thrown in the lion's den. And in the lion's den, he overcame again because the lion of the tribe of Judah that was in him was greater than the little roaring lion. So whether it is financial problems, whether it is you're going through a tough time, God is able to get you through that in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise God. And so I'm here to encourage somebody, stand firm. It is not a religious thing. It is not something that you follow in tradition. Oh, today I haven't done any certain things that I need to do for God. Therefore, maybe that's why I'm going through this. Or today I'm have, I have sickness. My family is, is I, I, I get so many people who, who, who are here complaining about God bringing sickness and disease in their lives or in their family members' lives and, and complaining that, oh, it is God who, who, who's punishing me. It is God. It's not God who brings sickness and disease. In other words, that was, that's what I'm saying. Praise God. Sickness and disease is not of God. Yes, sometimes when we step away from God, he lets the devil take over. And when the devil takes over, then the enemy attacks. If he attacks, it definitely the attacks through various ways, sickness and disease and poverty and all that. So yeah, but that is not God bringing the disease or the sickness directly or inflicting that sickness and pain over you. He does not want anybody to be sick. He does not want anybody to perish. He does not want anybody to, to go through any kind of suffering. But there are repercussions when we don't do what we ought to do. And the repercussions then uh, signify that, okay, you've chosen the devil, the father of lies, and the father of lies is going to take uh, uh, his, uh, his chance to, 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 to inflict pain on you. But if you do believe in Christ and believe that he heals and believe that whatever is written in the word of God is true, and you stand firm on the word of God, you are going to get everything that was promised in his word praise god so there's a difference if you fear fear breeds sickness fear breeds uh, worry anxiety if you have faith fear or rather faith brings strength faith brings courageousness the righteous as the word of god says the righteous as bold as a lion you start boldly proclaiming praise god through the word of god your faith grows and you start boldly proclaiming those things that are not as though they are praise god that's what faith is because we we walk by faith and not by sight we don't see uh, things and then we get scared and then uh, we run away we, we see those things yes it doesn't mean that those things don't exist they exist but we don't fear them we proclaim boldly and say in the name of jesus poverty you're bound in the name of jesus death and destruction you have no power over me in the name of jesus infirmity sickness and disease I bind you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of lust of the eyes, of the flesh, of the heart, covetousness, you are bound in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. And so that is what faith is about. Faith is the substance of hope, the evidence of things unseen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, Romans 10, 17. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith, even as small as a mustard seed, is able to move mountains so in other words you must believe that the god that has called you the god that created heaven and earth is greater than these little little demon spirits and and satan and his demonic angels that fell that, that are also actually created we are created by god praise god they have no power praise god we are all created by god we are created actually in the image of god so we are greater than satan Think about it for a minute. You are created in the image of God. The word of God says in Psalms 139 verse 14 that we are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. Praise God. And that is where the spiritual uh, uh, aspect of us comes in. Our spiritual dominion is in the realm of the spirit. God is spirit. So if we are created in the image of God, Christ being the spirit, praise God, the Holy Spirit and the Father being one in spirit, then we must operate in that realm of the spirit and proclaim by the power and authority given to us in Luke 10, 19, Luke 9, 1, Matthew 18, and Matthew 16, 19. Bind every demonic force of darkness, every spirit of evil, spirit of antichrist. Praise the son of a living God. And we shall overcome because that's where the dominion is. But if the enemy tries, tries to take you into the physical and then you, you see all, uh, you start worrying. Jesus Christ said, 
doesn't add any cubit to you if you worry. Worry about food, worry about jobs, worry about all these things. Just pray to God in heaven. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. And God will open that door. Praise God. The enemy tries to lie to us and, 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 and you know, he throws things at us and, and even speaks. You know that the enemy speaks. <laughs> the enemy, that old serpent called the devil, speaks. That's how he tried to tempt Jesus Christ with those so many kingdoms and the authority if Christ bowed down. Can you imagine the Son of God bowing down to the devil who he created? Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise, somebody. Praise God, somebody. The enemy would want the Son of God to, to bow down to him when Christ who was in the, according to the word in John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. Nothing that was ever created was created without him. In other words, heaven and earth and everything in it were created by God himself. Before anything was there, he was, God was, heavenly father was, the son was, and the Holy Spirit were. They were one, praise God. Don't ever think that, oh, maybe oh, the father maybe first was there and then he created the son and then they, they also created the spirit. They were there in the beginning. Praise God. Satan was not there. That old serpent called the devil was not there. No, he was created. He was created. It was an angel, actually, before he became stubborn and tried to sit on the throne of God and was thrown out like lightning. Jesus Christ tells us in the scripture that he saw Satan being thrown out like lightning from heaven. So he got to try to confuse us. We must stand firm and knock down the wiles of the devil with our shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, the helmet of salvation, which is looking to Jesus Christ, the oath and the finish of our faith. And we're going to read the scripture that speaks of that um, in a moment. Praise God. We have the breastplate of righteousness, which is of Christ. Praise God. The belt of truth and the shoes of peace. All that are the full armor of God and fight the battle in the realm of the spirit. Praise God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I'm, I'm just giving you some words of encouragement, but also in the realm of us, something is happening. Praise God. <laughs> something is happening. Praise God. I, I proclaim life. I choose to proclaim life, not death. Proverbs 18, 21 says that our tongues have the power to speak life or death, and those that love it shall eat their fruit there. So what you proclaim is what comes to, to pass. If you proclaim evil, curses, that's what comes to pass. Uh, unfortunately, you're using your mouth and your tongue for evil purposes, for satanic purposes. But if you are of God, you must use your tongue and your mouth and everything in you, really, for the glory of God. Praise God. And that is through the Son of a living God, who was there in the beginning, who died for the forgiveness of our sins, who was sent by our Heavenly Father, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son, that we may all have eternal life, not perish, but have eternal life and has given us the gift of the holy spirit praise god it is the holy he is not it is he is the holy spirit holy spirit that is with us that can help us overcome evil praise god even when the enemy throws things at you i'm telling you the enemy has so many ways of throwing things at you through dreams he can plant tears in dreams he can bring all kinds of things to attack you especially when you you speak the truth there will be attacks more than ever i get through attacks all the time in dreams and things but thank god god shows me those enemy enemy attacks those demonic forces of darkness attacking me and he readies me and he prepares me to, to to fight the battle praise god and i can tell you that i've always been victorious in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah and i do pray that each and every one of us are victorious in the name of jesus hallelujah somebody all right, we're going to read uh, Hebrews chapter 12, but before that, I'm going to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your loving kindness and tender mercies, and I want to glorify your name. I come before you, mercy seat, and I ask you for the forgiveness of my sins, and everybody that is listening at the sound of my voice, I pray that you forgive each and every one of us, purify us, cleanse us with your precious blood, Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your word, my Lord, my God, according to your word, as we just learned in First Peter 1, 23, let it build us inside out, my Lord, my God, living word of God imperishable seed lord my god that we may be the salt and light to the world that you've called us to be in the name of jesus in everything that we do say thing not just speaking not just hearing because james 1 22 you again you warn us through your servant that us just not just be hearers of the word but be doers of the word standing firm on the rock of our salvation which is jesus christ the son of a living god in the mighty name of jesus and everybody say amen to the king of kings Hallelujah. 
So we're going to read from uh, um, Hebrews chapter 12, and again, this is a continuation uh, from Hebrews 11, the uh, cloud of witnesses that we just learned to Gideons, and we learned for, about Joshua, we learned about Moses, we learned about Abraham, and in Jephthah recently, I think it was yesterday, Jephthah was really a very different <laughs> a different judge that I uh, personally, I, I really learned a whole lot uh, studying that, that uh, uh, what, he, what God he used him to do and and coming from humble backgrounds Jephthah came from humble grounds a, ch a child from a, a, a harlot a, a relationship between um, his father and a harlot and so considered really an outcast and yet God used him God used him and this just goes to tell you brother sister family whoever is listening that God does not look at your weaknesses he does not look at your upbringing your you you may consider yourself oh I'm from the scum of the earth you know, some people can consider themselves useless and that's what Jephthah considered himself because of what people had spoken in his life they said no you are a child of the hell we don't even want you I want they disowned him and some people may have been disowned but I'm here to tell you, God loves you. He loves each and every one of us. That's why he so loved us that he sent his only begotten son to die for forgiveness of our sins. Praise God. As a matter of fact, in one of the, uh, um, the, um, the, uh, one of the parables, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like uh, the, the parable of the treasures. In fact, that's right. the kingdom of heaven is like uh, someone who looks for a treasure. He pays everything, sells his land just to buy that treasure. That's what God did. That's what Jesus Christ did. God did for us through Jesus Christ. Praise God. He's, he, he did everything. He did, sold everything to buy that one treasure. Praise God. So in other words, Jesus Christ had to give up his throne in heaven to come down here and on earth. What God says, he was the word that came down from heaven. Praise God. Down from heaven. Became flesh dwelt among us darkness did not comprehend it comprehend him praise god crucified on the cross died rose from the dead praise god now whoever believes in him has eternal life praise god still some people don't comprehend him there's still a lot of darkness out there people in the dark hosea 4 6 what god declares my people are dying because of lack of knowledge so jesus christ did it all for each and every one of us and he did it not because of what we did not because of our righteousness because our own righteousness is as filthy as rugs but he did it because of the love and then he came to that which was already um, um, already um, uh, maimed and, and and beaten up by by the devil uh, in bondage praise god if you look at the words that he read in uh, synagogue um, and confirming that that scripture had been fulfilled uh, in the book of isaiah 61 reading from the prophets one of the greatest prophets that i love confirming that that um, he is he that the scripture was speaking of praise god that he had come to those that were maimed and wounded and then in prison praise god in fact let's read isaiah 61 uh, i like the scripture actually let's just read from luke chapter 4 because in luke chapter 4 um is when it references that scripture directly praise god and then elsewhere but these are the words that he said the spirit of the lord is upon me directly from isaiah 61 because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Listen to that. The gospel to the poor and to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives to, uh, and recovery of sight to the blind. Now, now the, the recovery of sight to the blind is not just the physical, but rather in the realm of the spirit. Praise God. And he says that the spirit of a living God was upon him. He went, remember, and for 40 days and 40 nights, he went in the wilderness. Before he went in the wilderness, the Spirit of God descended upon him. And then he went and was tested, and, and as we are tested on a daily basis, by the devil. To the extent that he was asked to, to fall from the pinnacle of the temple and, and then fall down. After all, this is Satan saying, the angels, God will send the angels to, to, to uh, they, they will not let the uh, uh, stones hurt your toes and, and your feet. And, and this is the devil. This is what he does. He twists the word to his own uh, um, his own preference to confuse, to, to bring false doctrines and, and lies of the devil. Deceiving. These are called deceiving spirits. And that's what he does on a daily basis, to so try and deceive people. But God here is saying, Jesus Christ is saying, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, the recover, and the recovery of the sight of the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, 
Now, if somebody may be going through oppression of the devil, oppression of demonic attacks in the night, in the dreams. We go through those. That's how the devil operates. But I'm declaring in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Spirit of the living God, that whatever thing is binding us, even myself, anything that is fighting me and fighting you, let it be broken right now in the name of Yeshua, Ramesha, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and Omega. That's what he died, that we may not be oppressed, that we may have liberty, not any other liberty, but the liberty that comes from the Spirit of a living God. Not the Statue of Liberty. I talk about the Statue of Liberty. I'm going to talk about it because I know that's a foreign God. But the liberty that God is speaking of is the liberty that comes through the Spirit of a living God. Second Corinthians 3 verse 17, the Word of God declares, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Spirit is the Lord. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, is there is liberty listen to those words second question three seven the spirit is the lord and where the spirit of the lord there is there is liberty so in other words jesus christ praise god when he died on the cross he became spirit when he rose from the dead he became spirit praise god so in other words he died he rose from the dead as he rose from the dead he did not rise as flesh and blood paul speaks about it uh, very um, uh, clearly and says that Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So therefore, if God is spirit, and we know his spirit, praise God, then we who believe in him have that same spirit and we have eternal life. We are assured of eternal life. His body rose, praise God. It rose from the dead, not as by, uh, flesh and blood. He was not flesh and blood. It was no longer flesh and blood. It was transformed. It was glorified, a glorified body. We all, when Jesus returns, shall rise up, the dead in Christ and those that are alive with glorified bodies. And we will no longer be flesh and blood. In other words, the enemy will no longer have inflict pain on us. Right now, he can inflict pain on you through accidents, through things and sickness and disease. But when Jesus Christ returns, and he's returning soon, praise God, we will no longer have that pain. There will not be tears. Praise the son of a living God. Hallelujah, somebody. I feel so powerful as I speak these words because I know that it is truth. It is the truth. Praise God. So it says, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Praise God. Those are the words that he said. And so now you begin to understand that the purpose of Jesus Christ coming here on earth was to set us who were captive and to some extent still captive because until we get out of this body, this earth, and go into heaven, for those that believe, we are still captive. And those that don't believe, unfortunately, there is a hell. And don't let anybody lie to you. Don't let the Pope lie to you that there is no hell. Don't let any human being ever lie to you that is anything, such thing called purgatory. Those are the lies, the false doctrines of the devil. Praise the Son of a living God. And people don't want to talk about it, but I'll talk about it because it is a fact. There's not such a thing as purgatory. And, and hell is real. If you do not accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, that's where... People go. They are condemned. Yesterday we read scripture that whoever doesn't accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior is condemned. As a matter of fact, the Spirit of the Lord reminded me about the scripture that I did share with you yesterday in John 12, 48. Uh, praise God. Before we go to Hebrews 12, John 12, uh, 48. What does he say? John 12, 48. John 12, 48 says, He who rejects me, and this is Jesus Christ's words, himself he who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him the word that i have spoken will judge him in the last day so there is going to be judgment in the last day and those that are, do not believe in jesus christ are already condemned but if you believe you are not condemned romans chapter one uh, chapter eight verse one says there is no condemnation for them that are in christ jesus but we no longer walk according to the curse of the law of sin and death, but according to the law of the Spirit. But if, he's saying here, yeah, he who rejects me, who rejects Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, does not receive my words, he who rejects me and does not receive my words, has that which judges him. And what is that that judges him? The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. Now, the word we know is, the word of God is Jesus Christ himself. If he says something, it is true. Praise God. And he is going to be the judge at the day of judgment. He's going to ask us that which he sent us to do. Did we do it? Praise the Son of the living God, somebody. So the word 
will judge him. Uh, we will judge us, sorry. No, not judge Christ. The word will judge him that does not follow Christ, does not follow the words of Christ. Praise God. Praise the Son of the Living God, somebody. I don't know if you got the message. It said, He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. So in the last day, the word will judge each and every one that rejects Christ. And if you have ears, the word of God says, hear what the spirit of the living God says. We're going to go to um, Hebrews chapter 12. The point I wanted to make, actually, uh, is that none of us um, deserve <coughs> excuse me none of us deserve um the the, the grace and, and the, the uh, favor that we received it was by the grace of god that we received the favor that we received it is not because of our own works because of our own righteousness because of our own doings but because of the love of god the grace of god praise the son of the living god and a lot of people um uh, in the world, uh, the, the world that we live in is, is messed up. It's messed up. We see that even the cloud of witnesses that we are looking at who were obedient, and that obedience was counted to them as faith. They are, they, they know, the righteousness of God, they sought the righteousness of God rather than their own righteousness, was accounted to them as what? As faith. Even though some of them went through fire. In fact, Paul says, that they were stoned, they were sown in two, were tempted, were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goat skins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. They, the Elijahs, they wandered in caves and then they were put in chains. They, 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 they went through trial of mockings and scourgings and chains and imprisonment. So in this world, yes, Jesus Christ said, if you want to follow him, be ready to carry your cross. And as he was persecuted, yes, you will be persecuted for the sake of the kingdom. Praise God. Not for any other sake, but for the sake of what? Of the kingdom. And so these people went through suffering. But even then, they had their own personal shortcomings. King David, for example, he was promiscuous. He slept with Uriah's wife. Moses had his own flaws. We know that he killed one of the Egyptians and, and he disobedient even to God but yet because they were obedient to a certain extent they were allowed and that was counted to them as faith praise God so if you repent if you today if you repent ask for the forgiveness of your sins praise God and come to Christ not because of what you've done but just because you have a repentant hand God will forgive each and every one of us you and I praise God he will forgive each and every one of us. And that is what faith is about. It is not about what you do. It is not about the works. It's, otherwise, the Muslims and, and the, the, the Judaists and all every other religion that has some good aspects. Uh, in other words, the people do good things, not necessarily because of what they believe in, but good deeds. And then they represent that as their religion. Everybody will be going to heaven, but unfortunately not. There is only one way, the truth and the life, and that is Jesus Christ, the Son of a living God. So it's not by your... Your, your, um, your own wax. It's not by your own wax of righteousness, but by faith in Christ, the Son of a living God. Praise God. By grace. Now, now Christ came to a broken world. Christ came to a people that were already uh, dysfunctional, a people that uh, uh, were suffering with sin and unrighteousness and uh, so many things that happened in the past, even as we saw in the time of Sodom and Gomorrah in the times of Noah. And Jesus Christ warned that just as it was in times of Noah and Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall it be when he returns. And we see all that. We see the homosexuality going on and lesbianism and, 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 and a lot of things going on that are not of God. A lot of religiosity, a lot of killing and hatred and witchcraft and all these other things that are going on. And yeah, you and everybody that are sinning are who he came for. Matthew 17 says that he, not, he did not come for those that who are those who consider themselves righteous, but those who are unrighteous. You may be doing those things, but now God is saying that repent of those sins. Repent, come to him. Repent and come to him. Praise God. And you will be forgiven. Those, whether you're a murderer, whether you did what, whether you, you cursed and did all kinds of things, God is willing to forgive each and every one of us. 
and give us the gift of the Holy Spirit to help us overcome everything else. Praise God. To overcome and fight the good fight of faith as we wait for his return. Because he's coming back and he's coming back for a holy and unblemished church. Praise God. And so, so many people, Jesus Christ was from the tribe of the Lion of Judah. And rather he was uh, from, a, from, a, from a tribe of Judah. He is considered the lion of the tribe of Judah. So he was from the tribe of Judah. He came from the tribe of Judah. But if you look at the history of Judah himself, Judah who was one of the sons of uh, Jacob, praise God, among other sons, 12 sons that he had, and they became the tribes of uh, Israel. So Judah was one of the tribes. And, and from the lion of the tribe of Judah, when we read Matthew chapter 1, up to one, I think chapter 1, 1 to 6, we, we see that he comes from the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he's called from the tribe of Judah, and it's called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Praise God. Yet Judah himself was not perfect. Judah, the person that later became a tribe, was not perfect. Praise God. And so this goes to show you that Christ came to, even the people that he came through were not perfect. Israel was not perfect, but yet he had to become flesh, himself without any sin. Praise God. Because he was conceived by the power of the Spirit of the living God, without any sin. In, in that fact that he was unblemished and came to, to, um, uh, to a people that were not pure and holy, praise God, yet he had to become flesh in order to be sacrificed for the forgiveness of our sins, praise God. That just shows you that there is grace, praise God. Grace. He had to leave his seat in heaven as a son of God and come down and take on flesh, flesh that was already uh, uh, really... I can't say cor cor um, um, corrupted, but flesh that was sinful, sinful man. Praise God. We were sinful. That's why God could not do it through, uh, uh, without he himself putting uh, his son in the, in the, in the, in the, in, in the womb of, um, of Mary by the power of the spirit of a living God. Not through sexual relations, but by the power of the spirit of a what? Of the living God. So that was special. God knows each and every one of us. Praise God. Do you know that before we're even formed in our mother's womb, God knows us. He sends us as spirit. We are spirit. We are spiritual beings in a human body. That's what people miss out. And that is where the authority, that's where we have the authority over every demonic force of darkness. Because we are spiritual beings in a physical body. That's why when you become born again, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3, 16, we are the temples of the spirit of the living God. And when we become a temple of the Spirit of the living God, as having been born again in spirit, by water and spirit, we belong to Christ. We don't belong to the devil. We have no mixture with the devil. So in other words, if you use this body to, to sleep with the, uh, uh, somebody else who's not your wife, for example, if you use this body to, 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 to practice promiscuity and curse and hate and kill and sacrifice, you're using it, you're prostituting your body. You, you, you belong to Christ. And anything that defiles the body of Christ, once you become born again, must be destroyed. It says in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 17. Praise God. And so we must be very careful how we handle our uh, um, relationship with Christ. We must know that when we come to Christ, then we belong to Christ. We belong to Christ wholly. Praise God. Just like a marriage between a man and a woman. Paul explained in Ephesians 5, 21 to 33, that just like a, a, a man is joined with his wife, praise God, and they become one, praise God. It doesn't mean that, okay, they, they believe, they're supposed to believe as one. In fact, they're supposed to be one in spirit, even though the enemy these days is divorced like nobody. There's a lot of, uh, uh, like never before, there's, there's a lot of... Uh, um, marriage between believer and non-believer and that's not the way it should be you should all believe as one under the spirit and the holy spirit being your leader you as married couples praise god and i feel like i'm counseling but i shouldn't be counseling but that is the whole intention of marriage and marriage is not supposed to be between a man and a man a woman and a woman but between a man and a woman in a holy uh, um, a holy marriage praise god not just cohabiting, but a holy marriage. Fornication is, is not allowed. Adultery, unacceptable. Homosexuality, lesbianism, that is not of God. But in holy, uh, you can call it holy matrimony. Praise God. Holy matrimony. That is the true marriage. 
Praise God. And so similarly, when we become one with Christ, who is um, uh, the bridegroom, and, and we are the bride as a church, praise God, and, and somebody can convolute that and try to make it look like, but that's not the way it is. It is a spiritual marriage, a spiritual marriage in the sense that once you are one with God, a part of the body of Christ, you are supposed to be pure and holy. You're supposed to keep that covenant that was sealed with the blood of Jesus, pure and holy in the realm of the spirit. In other words, don't allow any other demonic forces of darkness to use you for evil purposes. Don't mix God with Hinduism and Buddhism and these other little gods or man-made doctrines and, and religiosity and, 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 and uh, anything that is an idol in your life. Praise God. And that is the true marriage that Paul was talking about in Ephesians 5, um, uh, 21 to 33. Now, God just got me there. I, I, I don't know how I got there, but I got there and I believe the Spirit is speaking to somebody. Praise God. But this just goes to show you the importance of the relationship that we have in Christ. The relationship that we have in Christ is supposed to be pure and holy. It is not supposed to be mixed up with other gods. God does not, he's a jealous God. He doesn't want to be mixed up with any little gods. You cannot share the cup of the Lord and the cup with demons. The table with the Lord and the table with demons. In First Corinthians 10 verse 21. But let's go to Hebrews chapter 12 in the interest of time. Is what he says. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, and so he's talking about the cloud of witnesses that we read in Hebrews 11, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So listen to those words, and that is so powerful. It is, he considers this a race. Well, his first of all references the cloud of witnesses. We, we should see from what they did and how they walked in their lives and how they overcame their weaknesses because many of them had weaknesses and they had sins of their own, as we said earlier. But they overcame when they decided to obey God. They decided to obey the righteousness of God. And that was accounted to them as faith. Even as today, it is faith that brings us to Christ. Praise God. Whereby we say no to sin. He's saying here. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Because sin will ensnare you. You make one small lie and then it becomes a big lie. You have to live up with that lie unless you lift it up and give it to Christ. Don't let it be heavy on you. Praise God. That weight that he's talking about. Lay aside every weight. Matthew 11 verse 28 to 30 says, according to the word of God, Jesus Christ speaking and again saying, that come to me all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Now the rest that he was talking about was that we hand over everything because he paid the price on the cross. On the cross, the price for every sin. Yes, you may have done so many things in the past. We may have, we all sin on a daily basis, but he doesn't want us to hold that sin and unto ourselves. You, do, you did it. Yes, you did it. It is in the past. Even if, even right now, you may have sinned. Just say sorry, Father, in the images. I pray that you forgive me. You notice how I pray when, when I start, forgive me for the sins that I've committed. I pray that you, you purify me, cleanse me with the precious blood. And that is it. That's what Jesus Christ did on the cross for each and every one of us. And that is the grace that we have in Christ. Praise the Son of the living God. And without that grace, all of us would have perished. If we were living according to the law, in the law of Moses, people would be stoned to death. You'd be seeing deaths and people suffering and People, who, today you matter, you're dead. Today you sacrifice a child, you're dead. You commit abortion, you do abortion, you're dead. Because all these things that people are doing today, homosexuality, Sodom and Gomorrah, a whole city, grace to the ground. The America will just be grace to the ground. And this is the grace that we have today. Yet people continue to abuse their grace. They continue to abuse their grace. Even try to, 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 to sugarcoat sins and, and, and uh, they think oh, this is a small sin and a big sin and this is not a, a sin according to the word of God and Jesus meant this and yet the scripture is very clear. And so brothers and sisters, I'm here to pray to you and as hard as this preaching is, uh, it is tough for me. The Holy Spirit emboldens me to, to preach this kind of gospel but yet it is a gospel, yes, of repentance, a gospel of purity by, by grace. God expects us to come to him by grace, not according to the law, but by grace. And accept that, yes, we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but yet there is help and there is hope in Christ. And that hope in Christ 
assures us of eternal salvation if we repent of our sins. Praise the Son of the living God. So he says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So it is a race. The Word of God declares that we are sojourners in this world. Praise God. We are only here for but a short period of time. The, long, the longest one can live is 120 years, if you're lucky. 120 years. Most people die. 90, in some countries, even 60s is, 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 a, is a bonus. A bonus, yes. Praise God. In America, people live up to 100 something. Praise God. In some foreign countries, is up to 120. In China, I've had people that live up to 120. But here is the, is the thing. Here is the point. It says, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So we are in a race. And in this race, the final prize that you get, praise God, will depend on the choice that you make today. The final crown that you get, and there is a crown for those that win this race. Paul said, I have fought the good fight of faith. I have run this race that is set before me, and I'm ready to wear the crown of glory. What did he mean? He meant that in this race for faith, again, we're talking about faith in this scripture. Praise God. That it is a race of faith. Believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God who can get you through by the power of the Spirit of a living God. And without him, at the end of the day, when we all die and leave this world, there's going to be a prize. And that prize for those that win the race, praise God, will be the crown of glory, which comes from the Son of a living God himself. Praise the Son of a living God. Hallelujah, somebody. So he says, uh, in, in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, verse 1 again, and let us run the, with endurance. Endurance. Endurance, if you know the rest. Someone who runs. Sometimes you get tired. Sometimes you fall down. And, and this is the whole point about a rest. Sometimes you need a glass of water, a drink, a bottle of water. And this is what we preachers do. We have been called to speak to the lives of people, prophets of God, teachers. We encourage one another. I need encouragement every now and often. I go and, 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 and drink from some, some pastor or some teacher, some apostle. As long as God has directed me to bring from that, that source, praise God. Because there's so many false apostles out there. But this is what a race is about. That sometimes, yes, you get tired. But if you continue to drink from the source of the living water, and that is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God himself, the rock of our salvation, hallelujah, somebody. The Spirit of a living God being the, 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 the river of living water, praise God. The rivers of living water, praise God. God said, whoever believes in me, out of our innermost hurt shall flow rivers of living water. So in a way, once you believe, not in a way, but that is the truth. Once you believe in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, God will use you to be a source of living water. Not a source, but rather, uh, out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. You know the source, because the source is Jesus Christ himself, praise God. But because you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, from within you shall flow rivers of living water, having accepted Jesus Christ, who is the source. The rock of our salvation is the source of the living water. The Lamb of God, our Heavenly Father, praise God. Hallelujah, somebody. Praise the Son of the living God. And, and God is going to use you in my ways, and you're going to be healing, to bring healing to others um, uh, because of that obedience. Today, Paul, who was very obedient, formerly Saul of Tarsus, praise God, met Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus, and Jesus Christ transformed him, praise God. Today we are reading the scripture in Hebrews and Romans and all these other letters, praise God, which are rivers of living water for us, praise God, praise God. The source of the living water being God himself who used Paul and then Paul now, God speaking through him to speak to each and every one of us. And that's what God does when we preach the gospel, the truth, praise God. The people that become born again, they are used by God to go and preach the gospel. Praise the son of a living God. I'm, I don't know if somebody is getting the, the revelation here, praise God. And so in this race, we have to run with endurance. And once we, 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 that endurance in itself coming from Christ himself, from the Holy Spirit, you cannot run with endurance without continuing to drink from the, from the source. Praise God. As we said, you have to drink water. You have to drink uh, the, the, the rivers of living water from the source itself. And then from that source who gives you the rivers of living water. If you remember the, the story of the, yeah, the Samaritan woman who went to a well, praise the son of a living God. 
This woman was was uh, uh, did not uh, uh, was a Samaritan. And Jesus Christ was a Jew, and, and Jesus Christ says, "And give me a drink of water." And this woman says, "Who are you to ask me for a drink of water? You are a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan. We don't mix." And Jesus Christ tells her, "If you knew who was asking you for a drink of water, you give it to him because he would give you water that would quench your thirst forever, for eternity." Praise God. And that's what Jesus Christ meant. Because everybody that accepts him, whoever believes in him, out of our innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. The source being the rock of our salvation, which is the Lamb of God that was slain for forgiveness of our sins. And our Heavenly Father who sent him. Praise God. As a matter of fact, if you read Revelation chapter 22, that will speak to you. I went there and, and for some reason the Holy Spirit got me there. But I, I'm going to read Revelation 22 so that you understand. What is this rivers of living water? Or the river, some it's called the river of life, praise God. So it says, and he showed me, Revelation 22, verse 1, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. So, in other words, the rivers of living water are the source of it, is not we, the human beings, it is from God and the Lamb of God. Praise God. The throne of God Himself, God Almighty, our Father in heaven, and of the Lamb, the Lamb of God being. Jesus Christ himself. And in the middle of his street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits. And you can go on and read and read. But now you know what the source of the rivers of living water is. It is the rock of our salvation. It is our heavenly Father that sends the Holy Spirit. And the river, somebody may be wondering, who, what is the rivers of living water? Why is this man talking about the rivers of living water? Ask. Pastor is, is going to give you that source. And, and it is the very... Uh, uh, a cross of our ministry. Praise God. Praise the Son of the Living God. So in John 7, verse 38, for those of you who have uh, that question, praise God, I feel led to to, to just, um, 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 you know, expound on this issue so that you understand. Praise God. I'm going to turn this phone off so that it doesn't um, interfere with our study. So John 7, verse uh, 38, if you're there, somebody, Say amen. So here he says, as I, I quoted earlier, he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his herd will flow rivers of living water. Now, so we know the source. The source is uh, God, the Heavenly Father, and the Lamb of God, which is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And let us listen to verse 39. Here he says, what are the rivers of living water? But this, he says in 39, he spoke concerning the Spirit whom those believing in him would receive for the holy spirit was not yet given because jesus was not yet glorified praise god and so that is the gift that we receive once jesus christ is glorified and jesus christ was glorified when he died on the cross and overcame death went to the father in heaven today he's great the, the name above all names praise god the name above all names there is no other name except the name of jesus christ praise god praise the son of the living god there is no name in the heaven, on the earth, and underneath the earth that is greater than the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Under which or under whom all can be saved. Praise God. Through Jesus Christ, we are saved and we are born again of water and spirit. And he is the source of that living water together with the Father in heaven. Of course, the Father in heaven uh, who sent him uh, so that whoever believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Praise God. And so having put that to settlement, let us know then that as we run in this race on this earth, we must call upon the Holy Spirit. For those that are led by the Spirit of the living God are the children of God. And the only way we can overcome the temptations, the trials and tribulations, the evil that is in the world is by the power of the Spirit of the living God. Let us look at verse 2 in Hebrews 12, verse 2, back to Hebrews. It says, looking unto Jesus. Looking unto who? Jesus. The Holy Spirit himself never points to anybody, but points to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said that when the Holy Spirit comes, he will point not to his own authority, praise God, but to the authority of Jesus Christ. In other words, the Holy Spirit himself is, is an authority. And together with Jesus Christ and the Father, they are one. We've seen that he proceeds from the throne of God and the Lamb. And so they are one. And he has a purpose here. His purpose is to help us overcome all the evil that is in the world. Praise the Son of a living God. And so he points to Jesus Christ and what he already did. 
on the cross for each and every one of us. Not to any other God, not to Hinduism or Buddhism or whatever, but to the only way, the truth and the life, and that is the Son of a living God. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured his endurance. Where is the endurance and where should our endurance be as we run this race that is set before us? Go back to verse 2. It says, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. How was his endurance? Let us look at Jesus. So we look to Jesus as we run this race, not to anybody else. Who is the author and the finisher of our faith? The beginning and the end. Author means he authored that St. John will be here at such a point, at such a time. And he's the finisher because he knows the end. He is the beginning and the end. He's the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. He was there in the beginning. He's here today. He's going to be here for there forever and ever and ever. He is who is, was, and is to come. Do you get that? In the mighty name of Jesus. So if we believe in him, then he's going to walk in our hearts and give us the victory that we need. Praise the Son of living God. He says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured, those are the key words, endured the cross, despising the shame. So he endured the cross. And there was shame on the cross. Everybody that was hung on the cross, according to the word of God, whoever was hung on the cross in those times was a curse. And guess what? He endured the cross, despising the shame. He despised the shame of the curse. Because he was sinless. He really didn't deserve to pay the price. Yet he had to pay in order for us to be set free. Praise God. He who was sinless took on our sin that we may be sinless. He who was rich. He was rich in all accounts. Seated in the throne of God at the right hand of God. But yet he had to come down here. That we may. We who are poor may be rich. Praise God. So he says here. He, uh, that, that looking unto Jesus. The author and the finish of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross he knew that at the end of the day at the finishing of the rest there would be glory hallelujah somebody he would wear the crown of glory he would actually wear many crown, many crowns praise god the firstborn would lead to many other firstborns praise god hallelujah that whoever wins in christ will wear that crown he will be given the crown hallelujah somebody when he fights and finishes this rest you will wear a crown of glory. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. So I, I, I don't know if you're getting the message. He, it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him. In other words, he saw joy at the end of a tunnel. He saw a, a greater glory at the end of a tunnel. When you are running for gold, going back to the rest, when somebody is running for gold, when you see Usain Bolt, or any of these other runners and, and, and people that run 100 meters and even really they look at the goal they don't look at the, all the things that are going to happen along the way they are looking for the joy and they do whatever they are doing looking at the the, the crown of gold and looking at the goal that is to come the gold medal that is an athlete gold medal but we have a greater goal as born again believers and as we run this race set before us and if you're not yet born again please do as we run this race, just know that there is a crown of glory at the end of the tunnel. Praise God. At the end of the day, in heaven. Praise God. And that's why Jesus Christ said in Revelation 3 verse 18, praise God, that see gold that has been tested by fire from me, that you may be rich. And white garments that your nakedness, your nakedness may be covered. So he recognizes yes, there will be nakedness. There will be some kind of suffering, some, some kind of sin and trials and temptations. But if we look to Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith, he will give us those white garments that our nakedness may be covered. He will give us that gold that we ought to seek, the gold from heaven, not the gold of his world, praise God. And he says, I serve that we may see, praise the son of a living God. That is in Revelation 3 verse 8. So as you look, as you run, Praise the Son of the living God. This rest that has been set before us, the run, the, 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 the rest that is based on faith. Praise God. And look into Jesus, the author, the finish of our faith. Let us know that at the end of the day, there is a crown of glory. There is gold to win, just like in any other race. Much better than any other race, of course. But uh, comparingly, praise God, there is a prize, a prize to win in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it, say a big amen. So, so Jesus himself 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now he's seated at the right hand of, of the throne of God. And we just read in Revelation 22 that he is the source of the rivers of living water. So the, the rivers of living water don't come from any place except through Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Whoever believes in him, out of our innermost being, shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah, somebody. Praise the Son of the living God. Listen to verse 3. Verse 3 is very powerful. It says, For consider him who endured with such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. So Jesus Christ had to go through a lot of temptation. He had to go through a lot of sinners themselves that he had come to die for, trying again to kill him. The Pharisees saying all kinds of things, cursing him even. People that threw stones at him, they did all kinds of things. And he endured shame on the cross. He despised it, but he had to endure it because it was the purpose for which he had to die. Hallelujah, somebody. And all of us, born again believers, and some may not be born again. I'm telling you, you, become, you need to become born again. But for those that are born again, that are going through some kind of persecution, that, consider that. Shame as nothing compared to the glory that is to come. Hallelujah, somebody. As a matter of fact, in James, the word of God declares that count it all joy when you go through, 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 through persecution because that creates endurance. It grows your faith and creates endurance. So every time you go through persecution, the Holy Spirit will give you endurance for the sake of the kingdom, not for any other sake, but for the sake of the kingdom. Isaiah 40, verse 31, the word of God declares, those that wait upon the Lord shall be strengthened. They shall soar on the wings like an eagle. Run and not grow weary. Walk and not get tired. Hallelujah, somebody. So in other words, if you wait upon the Lord, you're going to endure. You're going to be strengthened. Holy Spirit will give you more and more strength. Even when you, you see uh, things are tough and, and there's a lot of attacks and all that, Holy Spirit will give you the embold, the, 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 embold, the emboldment to continue on, to fight on the power and anointing, the strength. Philippians 4 verse 13 says, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Hallelujah, somebody. And then the Spirit of God is that power. Acts 1, 8, Jesus Christ before he left, he said, Go to the upper room, telling his disciples, go to the upper room, and I will send you, uh, you shall receive power from on high. You shall receive power from on high. Listen to those words. That's what God said. You shall receive power, and that power is of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And lo and behold, tongues of fire of the Holy Spirit, praise God, fell upon the children of, 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 um, of God who were in the upper room. And the disciples that, 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 that were filled with the tongues of fire and the spoken tongues, praise God. Tongues of fire, because God is fire. It's like a consuming fire, praise God. Today, we receive the same fire when we believe, praise God. We receive a gift of the spirit of the living God. In Acts 2, 7, he said, in the last days, I'm going to power out my spirit upon all flesh. Our young men shall have visions. Uh, daughters and sons shall prophesy. Young men shall have visions. Men shall have dreams. Men and women shall prophesy. He's promised to show signs and wonders from the heaven above and on the earth. Praise God. And we are seeing it happening. Amidst all the chaos, yes, it is happening. There's supernatural healings. And then I'm just going to boldly proclaim according to the word of God. Praise God. That eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered the heart of man. What God is about to do for those that love him. Hallelujah, somebody. In the name of Jesus. If you're willing to repent. To repent. Ask for the forgiveness of your sins and receive Christ. He's going to do it for you. Sin shall be blotted out. Praise God. And he will empower you with his spirit to overcome all the trials and temptations, all the wiles of the devil that all serpent called the devil by the power of the spirit of a living God. So here, for consider him who endured such hostility. How did he endure such hostility? Because he was filled with the Holy Spirit of God. He endured it from sinners. Praise God. From sinners like you and I, when we sin. Praise God. And sin all over again. If you're born again, believe if you sin, it's like you're crucifying Christ all over again. So we must repent of our sin. Praise God. And forget. Repenting means you, 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 you consider it in the past. Don't go back to drinking and cursing and hating somebody. Don't go back to, to, to lying and deceiving and, and gossip and all those other things that the, 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 the world does. 
Because once you are in the you are born again, you're not supposed to walk according to the world, the world, praise God, but according to Jesus Christ, the one in, 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 uh, that Jesus Christ has told us we must walk according to his word. Praise God. In Romans 12, 1 to 2, it says, to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the Lord, not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, which is through the word of God, that we may know that which is the perfect will of God. Hallelujah, somebody. So Jesus Christ endured such hostility from sinners against himself. So he says, lest you also become weary. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. So if you know that Christ did this for each and every one of us, and you accept him as your personal Lord and Savior, he'll give you strength. But every time you forget Jesus Christ, even every time you your eyes move away from Jesus Christ and what he did for you, praise God. That's why he's saying we should all look to Jesus Christ, the author and the finish of our faith. Every time your faith wanes from Jesus Christ, then you're not going to be able to run the race that is set before you. But if you remember what he did on the cross, God is going to get you through. Praise God. He's going to get you and I through. And at the end of the day, as Paul said, we shall run this race that is set before us, finish it in faith, and we shall wear the crown of glory. Hallelujah, somebody. So he says, For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners such against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. Discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. This is what Jesus Christ did. He resisted to the point of bloodshed. Now, the bloodshed, of course, he sweated blood. Did he say that he sweated blood when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane? And the point where he said, Lord, if it is possible, if you could take away this cup from me, yet, nonetheless, he said, not my will, but your will be done. So he recognized that it had not to be his will, but the will of God to be done. As a matter of fact, in John 4, verse 34, he said, not but my food is to do the will of he that sent me. All our wills should be to do the will of he that sent us. Now, our wills can be as Adam and Eve's will were. They listen to their will and their will draw them astray. But if you listen to the will of God, if you offer your body as a living sacrifice, all in acceptance of the Lord, do not conform to this word, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may know that which is the perfect will of God. Then you will wear the crown of glory. Praise God. So he sweated blood to the point of even actually... Uh, Losing blood, praise God. He was wounded for our transgressions, the scripture says in, in um, Isaiah 53, verse 5 to 6. Bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of broad peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Praise God. The stripes that he took, the, the, the piercings, uh, the blood that was spilled, that was paid as a price for each and every one of us, praise God, was that we may be healed, that we may have eternal salvation through him. Praise the Son of a living God. So he resisted sin to the point of shedding blood. In other words, we also must resist sin to the point of shedding blood. What kind of blood are we shedding? The blood, not uh, really, yes, to the point of death. If it means to die for the sake of the kingdom, so be it. Because that's what many men and women of God did. Paul, uh, people were stoned to death. Stephen, uh, Peter, uh, all the martyrs in the Bible, in, in, in the Bible, I'm not talking about the martyrs in, uh, in, in uh, according to, to religion, but we're talking about the biblical uh, people that were, uh, were killed, the saints of God that were killed for the work of God, they were killed and persecuted for the sake of the kingdom. They died and they shed blood because of the kingdom of God. In Revelation 12, 11, the word of God declares, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives to the death. What does it mean? We overcome by the power of the blood of Jesus. We don't overcome by any other thing. We're not killed for the sake of anyone else, but by the blood of a lamb, praise God. For the sake of the kingdom of God, we overcome. So in other words, if they came and told you that, uh, 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 say no to Jesus. In other words, you don't, don't accept Jesus Christ as, uh, as your personal Lord and Savior. Or if you did accept, say no, that you no longer accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. And we are going to kill you if you don't. Say no. In other words, say, if you want to kill me, kill me. I'm saying no to whatever you're telling me. Praise God. And you are killed by the blood of a lamb by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives until then. Many people were beaten up, scourgings for the sake of the kingdom, which, again, 
the slew of witnesses that we have, the, the cloud of witnesses we mention here, that many were afflicted, many were tormented, many were, uh, they, had, they, they had trial of mockings and scourgings and, and, and chains and imprisonment. People like, uh, for example, um, John the Baptist, people like, um, so many, I, I can't even name them. There's so many in the Bible. For the sake of the kingdom, not for any other sake. But we overcome and don't give up at the, to the point of even death. We testify that Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth, and the life, and no other. Praise the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. And by testifying, testifying of the truth, not of any false doctrines or any lies, praise God, but telling the truth as God has put it on our hearts to the point of bloodshed. And that bloodshed, not in and of ourselves, but for the sake of the what? Of the kingdom. Praise God. Verse 5, he says, And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. Now, we know that when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we become children of God in the kingdom of God. John 1, 12. Praise God. And so as a child of God, when we make mistakes, God will chasten us. God will chasten us. Just like a father. I'm a father, and I can tell you when my child goes wrong and, and does some wrong things, I, I get mad. I, I tell them, no, you cannot do this. Praise God. So similarly, our Father in heaven, the Father of spirits, and, and Paul here explains, Father, he says that if you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in the subjection of the Father of spirits and live? The Father of spirits being our Father in heaven. Praise God. And so sometimes we make mistakes and we get chastened. Praise God. God loving us and not wanting us to perish. Praise God. Had to send his own begotten son that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. And, and for the sake of each and every one of us, he was chastened. The son of God was chastened, was in other words, beaten up for our sake, was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of peace was upon him. The chastisement that brought peace, listen to those words, the chastisement that brought peace was upon him. So he was chastised, not for anything that he did wrong. Jesus Christ had nothing wrong. The scripture says, he who was sinless, you've heard me quote that before, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, took on our sin that we may be sinless. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, he who was rich became poor that we may be rich. So he was scourged for nothing that he did wrong, but yet he had to pay the price. And the father in heaven scourged his own son, praise God, scourged his own son for our sake that we may be have eternal life. In other words, he presented him as a sacrifice that we may be blessed, that all nations may be blessed. Fulfilling the promise to Abraham, praise God, that through your seed, all nations shall be blessed. And that seed was Jesus Christ, the Son of a living God, which we learn in the scriptures in Matthew chapter 1, that from the times of Abraham, Jesus Christ was that seed that was promised. He came from the line of Abraham. Praise God. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Praise the Son of a living God. Hallelujah. King of kings. When I think of uh, the goodness of the Lord and what he has done for us, when I think of the, the grace that we have and, and the death in Christ and, 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 and how he continues to do a work in this world, even though people don't comprehend uh, what he did on earth, I really sometimes I feel saddened, but I pray. I give thanks to God. First of all, that I'm born again. But I pray that many souls come to Christ. I pray that Hindus and Buddhists and people that are practicing religion, Catholicism and, and, and all these other religions, which God really doesn't want us to follow. He doesn't want us to follow any specific religion, any specific doctrine, but follow Christ. Not any human made. You've heard me say this before. I'm going to say it. I don't believe in interdenominationalism or denominationalism. I don't believe in witchcraft. I just believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who died for the forgiveness of our sins. And there is no other way, truth, and life except him. And him crucified and him rising from the dead. And that the same spirit of the living God that raised him from the dead is the same spirit that we receive as born-again believers. And that he is the only way, the truth, and life.
uh, that gives us eternal salvation, assures us of eternal salvation. Praise God. And so friend, brother, sister, if you're following religion and man-made tradition, I'm, I'm not really abusing anybody or trying to condemn anybody. But I'm just speaking the truth in love and telling you that religiosity, Jesus Christ said in Matthew 5, 20, unless our righteousness is greater than that of the Pharisees, none shall see uh, the kingdom of heaven. Praise God. So we must resist, desist from following any specific doctrine, man-made doctrines of people, human beings, or glorifying human beings more than God because that's the spirit of Antichrist. There is only one name and there is no other name above any other name except the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Praise God. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Praise God. The enemy, the old serpent called the devil, wants to exalt himself above God. And that is the spirit of Antichrist that he, you've heard is already in the world. We must watch out because it is somewhere. It is not yet be re been revealed. The Antichrist has not yet been revealed himself, but we must watch out as born again believers. Praise the Son of the living God. Listen to these words. For those of you who are ashamed of the gospel, Mark 8, verse 34 to 38. And I'm going to close in a minute because um, I think I'm running out of time. And I don't want to go over time. And the book of Mark, if you're there with me, say a big amen. Mark 8, verse 34 to uh, 38. Take up the cross and follow him. When he had called the people to himself, um, with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Let him deny himself. What did he mean? It meant that you must crucify the flesh. You must deny yourself all the earthly pleasures. You must not have any pride because the enemy wants to create pride in our hearts so that we fall like he fell. And we must be very careful. The word of God declares in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that in the last days there will be a great falling away. In fact, Jesus Christ said in the last days the love of many will turn cold and there'll be so many lying signs and wonders and that if possible even the elect will be deceived so we must watch out for deceiving spirits lying spirits Satan himself masquerading as an angel of light we must stand firm on the word of the lord and these are the words of jesus christ himself he says that whoever desires to come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me for whoever desires to save his life will lose it but whoever loses his life for my sake, the gospel, so you see, losing your life for his sake, losing my life for the sake of the gospel, looking to Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith, not any other, praise God, not for any other sake that we lose our life, but for the sake of the gospel. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake, for the sake of Christ and the gospels will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? And there's so many people out there that are willing to sell their souls for the, uh, um, uh, for, for the sake of um, money. In other words, you gain the whole world and lose your soul. But if you're going to lose your, your, your soul for the sake of the kingdom, in other words, you seek God for the sake of God, for the sake of Jesus Christ and the gospel's sake, you will save it. Praise God. If you are ready to submit your heart to Christ and to his Holy Spirit and for him to use you in mighty ways, you will keep your life. You will save your life. Salvation is through Christ and Christ alone. Praise God. And we must not worship the things of the world, the gold, through stealing. How do you lose your soul? If you lie, you steal, you promise, you, you practice promiscuity, you prostitute your body for the sake of money. And yes, those are things that he died for. He does not want us to live in those things, especially when you become born again. You must say no to all manner of worship of false gods or prostitution. He says, yes, come as you were, but do not stay as you were. Your sins are forgiven, but go and sin no more. Even as he told the adulteress yesterday we read in John chapter 8, go and sin no more. Repent, in other words. That's what Jesus Christ is speaking here. Praise God. So he says, for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me, if you sell your soul just for the sake of uh, the earthly things, it says, for whoever is ashamed of me and my words, in this adulterous and sinful generation of, of him, the son of man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his father with the holy angels. Praise God. 
And so we must not be ashamed of Christ. In other words, we must say no to this sinful and adulterous generation. We must say the truth. We must speak out the truth without missing words. In love, but not sugarcoating the truth. That's what he means, praise God. And even in our own lives, not just simply saying it, because that's gospel, but in our own lives. Because if he says we are to deny ourselves, that means that we must say no to seeing ourselves. Not just speak about it, but say no to seeing ourselves. And the only way we can do that is if we submit to Christ, submit to the leadership of His Holy Spirit, for those that are led by the Spirit of the living God are the children of God. And with those words, I would like to close. I had a lot more to share with you, but in the interest of time, may God bless you abundantly. Uh, again, uh, 2 Peter 3, 14 and 1 Peter 1, 16, is, Jesus Christ says, be ye holy because I am holy. So he wants us to be holy. And the only way we can be holy through the power of the Holy Spirit because he's coming back for a holy and unblemished church. In 2 Peter 3, verse 14, it says, he is coming back for a holy and unblemished church. Ephesians 5, 27, it is the same. Praise God. As we who are firstborns, uh, all the firstborn, praise God. That's what in Colossians chapter, if you have time, read Colossians chapter uh, 1, verse, uh, uh, I believe, 5, 15 to 18. Let us read and close, um, close that because I feel like I need to uh, speak about that as well. Praise God. So open your Bibles in Colossians chapter 3, the book of Colossians. Very beautiful book. It talks about Jesus and it reminds us of what we are here for on earth um, and that as believers, we ought to sacrifice um, ourselves and not look to the things of the world but look to jesus christ um, from whom we are accountable for everything that we do say even think praise god so in the book of colossians chapter one and i'm just going to read about just two verses 15 up to 18 it says he is the image of the invisible god and this is speaking of christ he is the image of the invisible god the firstborn over all creation so jesus christ is a firstborn over all creation we say that nothing in on the earth was created without him praise god that means you and i because we are the creations uh, and not the creator but we are creations praise god satan himself is a creation praise god and that's why he should not confuse us but we must look to jesus christ the son of the living god and our father in the spirit that created each and every one of us. And we are created fearfully and wonderfully made uh, according to the word of God in uh, uh, Psalms 139, verse 14 to 16, in that we must pray, ever pray, that whatever is written in the book in heaven may come to pass in our lives as it is written. Praise God. In verse 16 it says, For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible. So in other words, the angels that are not visible, even those things that are visible on earth in the natural realm, we are created by him. Praise God. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, in other words, even Satan. Praise God. Paul said in Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 18, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, flesh and blood that we see because that is the creation of God, but against principalities and powers in heavenly places, forces of darkness that we do not see. But then there is another realm of the spirit in the third heaven that is angels mighty angels angels of fire angels of strength angel michael the archangel fighter angels commanders in the heavenly realm who the, from the lord of hosts if we pray he will send those, those mighty angels to fight on our behalf praise the son of a living god elisha elisha and his servant they were attacked by the enemy and and, and, and elisha prayed to god that his servant who was shaking and worried and fearful he prayed that God would open his eyes that he would see that those that were with them were greater than those that surrounded them. Praise God. In other words, those that were with them, in other words, the angels that were invisible, angels from heaven, were greater than the enemy that surrounded them, that were seeing in the realm of physical. And yes, the enemy can use human beings to come against you, but we must not fight against human beings, but those demonic forces behind them, knowing that the angels that surround us, the angels from heaven that are sent by the Lord of hosts, the King of Kings himself, praise the Son of the living God, will be able to fight for us at the command, at the command of the King of Kings himself, the author and the finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah, somebody. And that we who are born again, having 
being bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, the firstborn of all firstborns, the firstborn of all creation. Praise the Son of the living God. He gives us the power of the Spirit of the living God, the power that works in us. He who is able to provide exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond all we can have expect or imagine, upon the power that works in us, is able, well able, and that greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world. Praise the Son of a living God. So he says, dominion or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, and the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Preeminence being that he should be fast in all things. Praise the Son of a living God. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Revelation 1 5. The book of Revelation 1 5. And I'm, I'm going to close. I think it's about one minute. Revelation 1 5. Revelation 1 5 says uh, that. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And has made us look at six beautiful and has made us kings and priests in his God and father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen praise God so he has made us kings and priests ordained to rule here elsewhere he says we are uh, we are uh, we are kings and, 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 and priests ordained to rule here on earth praise God joint heirs with Christ seated in heavenly places far above principalities and powers praise God that's what happens when you become born again. That the devil, that old serpent called the devil, has no dominion over you, you and I. And let us stand firm in the mighty name of Jesus. May God bless you abundantly with those words. I'm going to close uh, with a prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the word that we just shared. And I pray in the name of Jesus that whoever has listened, my Lord, my God, is delivered, even as I speak in the name of Jesus. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though the enemy attacks us, even though a host of demons encamp against us, we are unafraid. We stand firm, we shall proclaim boldly that which you put on our hearts. In the name of Jesus, we dismantle the network of the devil. We demolish every spirit of evil, every spirit of antichrist, every spirit of lust of the eyes of the flesh of the heart, pornography, spirit of homosexuality, spirit of adultery and fornication, every spirit of witchcraft. We bind in the name of Jesus by the power and authority given to us in Luke 10, 19, Luke 9, 1, Matthew 18, 18, and Matthew 16, 19. You say, whatsoever thing we bind here on earth, we'll be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thing we loosen in our, in our on earth, we'll be loosened in heaven. So so be it in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody say, Amen. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Every spirit of religion, every spirit of Islam, Catholicism, every spirit that is Antichrist, I bind in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree that this mind shall be in each and every one of us. A mind of Christ, according to the word of God in Philippians 2 5, 1 Corinthians 2 16. In the name of Jesus, I have prayed. And decree and declare that we are the temples of the spirit of a living God. Whoever is not yet born again, I pray that they become born again. Born of water and spirit through the son of a living God. In the name of Jesus. The only way, the truth, and the life. May God bless you abundantly in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall learn some more next week on Monday. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. May the blood of Jesus cover each and every one of us. And we overcome the devil by the power of the precious blood of love. In the name of Jesus. Any other spiritual forces of darkness, spiritual marriages, for those of you who don't know about spiritual marriages, there are spiritual marriages in the realm of the spirit where the devil tries to attack you with forces of darkness that sometimes appear in the form of human uh, humans, in the form of people that you know. And they come in dreams and, and in, sometimes they sleep with people. These are demonic forces of darkness. So we bind those spiritual husbands and spiritual wives in the mighty name of Jesus. Those are lies of the devil. We break them. We break those spiritual marriages from the devil. In the name of Jesus, I have prayed. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Who shot Sakaya? In the mighty name of Jesus, any spirit of religion, any demonic force of darkness, oppression of the devil, every demonic possession, repression, depression, a bind in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare that our minds are set free, our souls are set free. For whom the Son has set free is free indeed. In the name of Jesus. The word of God declares, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. We have been set free by the power of the precious blood of Jesus, according to the word of God. In the name of Jesus, in John 8, 32 and 8, 31, 8, 36, praise God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, to the King of Kings. May God bless you abundantly, in the name of Jesus.
Urabashandu Sakatamani.